morning, everyone. We're going to get started in just uh, about a minute here. Give us another minute or so for some more folks to arrive, and then we'll get going. Good morning, everyone. My name is Don Pearson. I serve as the uh, Chief Strategy Officer with Inductive Automation Software, and I'll be uh, moderating uh, and serving as a host for today's webinar. I'd like to thank all of you for attending. I think the, uh, the benefits of moving to automated data collection webinar is going to give you some strong information today, some useful information today. And my job is, uh, at the start is maybe to set the stage a little bit with a little bit of a background um, on inductive automation and what we've done as a company, where we started, and a little bit of what, what sets the stage to be able to have the kinds of solutions which you're going to hear about today from CASA as we go forward in the webinar. We started actually back in, 19, in uh, 2003, and we really were pioneers in database-centric web-launched HMI and SCADA systems. And you can see just a variety of different industries where uh, inductive automation and ignition are, are playing and have applications, uh, have applications today. There were a lot of, uh, I guess you'd just call them industry frustrations at the time with patchwork systems, rationing, clients, licensing. And, and it, it, you know, you take a look at where we are today, the users are, are struggling with systems. They've been pieced together or patchworked together, uh, sometimes over years. Um, and you really can't blame them. It's just what happened year by year. It's just how it is. And clients are expensive if you want to add them to your system. So really what happens is most users are forced to uh, pick and choose who gets access to the data. And they're thinking about data and cost and licensing for software because it's still based on an old model of pricing where users pay a certain amount of money for a certain amount of tags or clients. And the more they need, the more it costs. And these really are all things that have, have really held control systems back, whereas Ignition, the idea was let's build something from the ground up and let's eliminate the frustrations. So as technology has evolved, so did the control systems. And you really get a variety of software and hardware components have been introduced over the years, and the patchwork has just gotten uh, a little bit more difficult to deal with. So costs skyrocketed um, to add on new technology to systems because you just have to develop uh, you know, workarounds. And they have to be done just to make the new technology work. So usually there's a lot of custom scripting done. It takes sort of a special, if you will, uh, guru to, to get this done at times. And then when you have to make changes, um, call those people back and just hope they're still around. In short, systems have been patched together with custom scripting and add-on components um, to make different devices talk to each other. And in the end, um, really, systems end up collapsing under uh, under their own weight. So if you if you take a look at how that happens, it's it's really developed over the years. You start off and uh, they start with a couple of PLCs in a company and the same brand, and then later on they want to add another PLC to the system. So uh, as you add another PLC to the system, you basically have to make the different brands talk together. So then you're going to have to have a you know a protocol converter that's added to them so that they can work together. And you know how this happens. The company then wants to attach some additional items, maybe a flow meter, barcode scanner, and now they have to get special components and programming in order to make those things work correctly. Um, later on, let's add some HMIs, and, uh, and, and along with those comes the software that had to be installed on each computer, and the company buys a license for each one of those clients in order to make that work. And, and uh, then the story and the software, and ERP software gets added to the mix, and the, you know, the dollar signs just start you know, adding up as you as you do this, and not to mention the cost of development software, and that to make the changes to the HMIs and, and OITs, and and then you add on top of that a, a web-based technology came around, and and it and it was just patched into the system, pretty much like everything else was, and cost of the company uh, more money, implement to get it done takes more time, 
um, and all to get these all these different software and hardware components to talk together. And you know, add on to that, uh, it, after it's set up, you want to make more changes. It takes a lot of man hours, and it, it just keeps going on and on to the point where pretty much you just got a lot of dollar signs going off, a lot of money going off, and time going off. Um, and uh, then the company software company comes out with some upgrades, and they have to make sure the system's upgraded so it can be maintained, and and that has to be done on every machine, and and um, you know other parts of the system also be upgraded. I mean, you you sort of got the picture. It just goes on and on and on. So really, I think if you if you take a look at what what we've looked at with inductive automation, is we said what do we have to do to get rid of the all this upgrading and costs and licensing and the whole model evolving like that and draw a new picture. So what if the software could be rebuilt from the ground up, actually designed for where technology is today rather than just trying to make today's technology fit yesterday's integration model? What if everything could be done with one piece of software and that software allowed your system to actually grow as technology grows in the future? Um, and what if the software was based on open standards making everything that could actually connect each other easily and really sort of take it from the ground up as, as Steve Heckman, our founder, did and said, what would I want as an integrator to really be effective at serving my customers and how should it be? And that really was the foundation for the mission of inductive automation and, um, and the foundation for the, the architecture of Ignition. So really, you, you can install Ignition. It's one piece of software. You can install it on a server in one place. Now the server can be anything from a standard uh, PC computer to an actual server. You can use any operating system for that server and for any client computer you're accessing with it. It's very much like uh, your office internet. Clients are web launched via the, via the network from that central server where Ignition is installed. The software was designed at the core with a web-based architecture. So it used Java to program the software because Java talks to everything. No more custom programming. System will connect up to SQL databases, allows data to be you know, manipulated any way you need to for particular functionality in the system. And that's one of the reasons you can use Ignition to build practically any type of system you need to as an end user or as an integrator for your customers. On top of all that, every server license for Ignition includes free, unlimited tags, clients. You don't pay according to how many you need. You pay you know, one flat price. So Basically, you look at a standard architecture, um, instead of adding a web-based technology as an afterthought, it's right in the middle of everything. Um, it's the central point for connectivity for every piece of hardware and software in the system. And just as an aside, it does work alongside any pre-existing software on the network that you're already working with. This picture is pretty standard in how plans set up ignition. Uh, and it's only one of a variety. Of, you've got a lot of potential architectures due to its modular nature of ignition. But this is just kind of a most common. You've got the ignition gateway that sits in the middle um, as server software, communicating with both SQL databases, also with industrial devices like PLCs um, through the OPC. And then you have our ever popular web launched, uh, you know, the web launch clients. They're not just web pages, these are fully featured, zero config, zero install applications that are launched from a web page. And you're going to see this in action. Um, so as you look at that and you say, you know, you can also then take a look and add on a quality control database or a uh, ERP database and, and, and multiple databases. That's where you can begin to connect up different departments. You can get to finance, quality control, even that back-end ERP system for HR. It's really flexible to build the system around the plant's particular needs. So if you, if you think about what it can do, real-time status control, historical logging, transaction, high-performance and trending tables, PDF reports, statistical process control charting, KPI monitoring alerting, free OPC UA server, a whole bunch more. So, so really, uh, what, what I was trying to do was just take maybe 10, 15 minutes and share some of the excitement and the foundation as far as what the logic was in building Ignition and what it can do for, for you and your, um, and your customers and the systems you're trying to build. And um, we'll, if you have any questions as you have on that, we'd certainly get into them in the Q&A. Uh, but, but really what I want to do now is uh, just take a moment and really turn it over to, uh, uh, to Heath and Garrett uh, from CASA Controls and, and move into the, uh, 
for the demo and presentation for today's webinar. Um, brief introduction. Brief introduction. Heath Roker is a project manager for Casa Controls. Um, he'll tell you a little bit more about Casa. He's in charge of working with clients to figure out what they want to accomplish and putting together projects to help achieve those goals. Garrick Riger, he is the senior control engineer. And Garrick works on getting the technical aspects of projects set up and implemented for customers. In a, in a little bit, you'll hear how Garrick worked on the nuts, you know, the nuts and bolts of a customer's project to get it working how the customer wanted it to. Um, we really appreciate uh, Heath, you, and Garrick uh, taking time to join us today. Um, so with um, uh, that, I will be able to turn. I'll turn it over to you. All right. Well, good morning, everyone, or possibly good afternoon, depending on where you're at. Um, want to thank everyone for taking time out today to listen to our case study and thank Inductive Automation for setting this up. Casa Companies is a 37-year-old industrial controls company that started out in the grain industry. And Don, we lost the screen. Okay, I am going to, I was passing it over to you, but what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to keep it. It should be back now. Okay. Are we back there now? Yes, yes sir. So what I, I guess what I'll do is just, you just let me know and I'll just, I'll just advance the slides. Okay. Um, we have... We started out in the grain handling industry as just a controls house. We now have three other companies, all wholly owned subsidiaries under one umbrella of CASA companies. In addition to our controls house, we have metal fabrication facility. We have Case Solutions, which is a solutions provider, uh, analyzes bottlenecks, finds solutions to customers' production facility problems, and then helps implement solutions, write contracts, um, provide the integration if necessary. And our third company is relatively new. Intellifishing is a turnkey paint processing system. Uh, it replaces the monolithic large paint handling systems that you find in production facilities like automotive plants, uh, large implement manufacturing plants or possibly appliance industries, washers, dryers, that type of thing. It fits in about the third of the footprint of a traditional paint system. And uh, so far, we're off to a great start. We're really excited about that new company as well, which we do the integration from the control side for that company. CASA started out in the grain handling industry, as I said, for a com uh, country elevators and port terminals, and on the next slide, Don, we uh, moved into various industries over the years. We have a heavy emphasis on material handling and conveying automation, as well as these other industries, pharmaceutical, plastic extrusion, water, wastewater. We've implemented inductive automation's ignition in uh, probably four or five different types of industries now. And we do projects all over the US, Canada, and Mexico. Don, next screen. Hello, Don. I think we lost Don. Did I get you? Did I get you this time? Um, next, can you index the next screen, please? Did it show up there, Heath? Mm, we are no. still on the company structure of Casa Screen, though. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let me do it again. I did do it. And we jumped way ahead. <laughs> All right. I'll get you back there. So I'm on Casa Control's current status. Is that correct, Keith? Yeah, just jump back one real quick. One more right there? Yeah. As All right. That was the industry serve that we work in. 
Okay, next slide. We currently employ about 30 engineers that do panel design, build, startup, and shop personnel for our panel production. We are an ISO 9000 2008 certified company with a large UL 508A panel shop. And CASA is an inductive automation premier integrator. We work with all the major brands of automation hardware, PLCs, drives, HMI softwares on the next screen, Don. And this made for an excellent fit for a client in the food production distribution industry. Our case study is on this project and where they needed to coin their phrase a middleware integrator. They had islands of automation on the floor, uh, various PLCs, sensors with no connectivity to the upper level plant ERP systems. And CASA with our abilities was able to provide all of that for them. This project uh, required extensive plant floor data collection and visualization, not so much supervisory control as on the SCADA side, mostly just date data collection and uh, the ability to see that information. They have multiple plants, some in different states, and various people in the plant from production supervisors, maintenance supervisors, quality assurance personnel, all needed to see different information. And to pre previous to the project, that was all done manually. People would have to go to the plant floor, record the data for production line counts, temperatures, and then go back to their office and transfer that to another system. And there was little or no connectivity. So the first phase of our project was to come in and integrate software to do that. The customer wanted to use another HMI software, um, but when it came down to implementing initially five plants and what the cost was going to be for all of the licensing for the servers and the runtime clients, uh, it quickly became cost prohibitive to add the hardware to collect the data from the floor and then the cost of the software to implement it. We introduced them to Inductive Automation's Ignition and gave them a proposal for it. The decision was relatively immediate. We were green-lighted to do the project. Uh, we set up servers in the five production facilities in a hub-and-spoke arrangement and one server at the main corporate office that would collect all of the data from the other facilities and back it up. Part of the requirement was for redundancy. So initially we had set up five redundant servers and that licensing was then later split out. They decided that the um, availability of the hub and spoke arrangement and the server at the main office backing up all the data, they were able to use the redundant licenses as standalone license to implement even more plants. So it proved very cost effective for them. Ignition was chosen for the project due to its uh, unlimited clients and tags, and the powerful database connectivity, which allowed us to connect to many different devices on the plant floor and pass information from the database to the plant's databases. The, uh, we introduced them for probably about a quarter of the cost of what the other HMI software system was going to cost just in software alone for licensing and clients. Next slide, Don. It was a bit of a daunting task at first, that many plants. Uh, we had not connected multiple plants together to one server and to each other in the past. Uh, the networking to all of the PLCs and smart devices occurred about the same time we were setting up the servers. 
We had to add hardware to read individual sensors on the floor by adding Ethernet I.O., serial to Ethernet converters, various methods of getting data into the system that they needed to see that was not on an existing PLC or island of automation. The visualization screens were then added and all the data was historized and some of the data was trended. We started out with five plants and that quickly grew into nine plants, 176 devices that we are connected to with Ignition, over 360 screens of visualization, and a little over 17,000 tags of data points that we're monitoring for them. Their motto was, collect it all and we'll let you know what we really want to see out of that or what we'd like passed on to our systems. Next slide. With Ignition, it was easy to connect all this equipment and display the data and pass it on the format that each discipline in the plant wanted to see. With proper login access, um, anyone at one plant could see what was going on in another plant. The corporate office was collecting it all and could see all of the plants for their production distribution facilities. And I guess aside from the, the software cost benefit, the greatest advantage to our customer was that rather than getting spot checks of hand-recorded data throughout the day, they were able to get real-time, live, 24-7 data collection that they could use the trending feature or data mapping features to go back and look at what happened on each production shift what their totals were, if they were having quality issues or throughput issues. And besides the large scope of connectivity, another challenge was to push data or connect to the third party upper level software at the plant. And for that, I'm going to turn it over to Garrick Riker, senior control engineer here at CASA. He worked a lot on the configuration and setup of the ignition software. As he said, they wanted to use Ignition for all the reasons. They also liked the ability to be able to connect to various databases, which afforded them the ability to connect to this vertical software. Other companies had tried to implement this, and none had succeeded. But we came in and used Ignition with its database backbone to make the connections to directly write to the database that would allow this vertical software which the USDA, FDA uses for quality control, tags can be directly written. It also allowed them to keep the, the vertical software instead of having to replace it, and they could just use the ignition to write to it. Yeah. Next slide. I kind of covered the previous, but it was a seamless integration, gave the writes and reads back and forth directly from Ignition to the other software, so made it for a quick, easy, behind-the-scenes implementation and activity. Go to the next one. And then working with the maintenance team there, the managers for the maintenance at the facilities wanted to see the same data that the HMI down at the plant level on the machines could see from their, their maintenance area, their cribs. So we designed screens to mimic the production flow of the system so that they could sit in their office, their crib, and watch in real time statistics of what was going on, indication, alarming, was going on at each individual piece of machinery throughout the production line for each production line at each facility. So that we used the ignition to basically mimic the actual panels, which were various, you know, on machine software. Nothing was the same from machine to machine. It was, it was good to tie it all together for them. Now we can go into go to the next one. We'll go through kind of a how it worked, giving to show them from top to bottom of what they could see. You could, we started with what would be an overview of a typical production line. 
giving them each piece of machinery from start to finish. You start with where you make it to where it's sent out. All of this had real-time indicators of what was going on, if it was up, down, so anybody could look in and see what was going on at any particular line as the facility was running. And then underneath of each of these, these were buttons, underneath each of these we had the actual data. You could drill down to the next level, to the next slide, next slide though. and see actual real-time data, indicators, messaging, and various trending, which was history, all the data was history, so they could go back and see how much they'd done for a given amount of time, which gave them the ability to look back what things had done, trending over the weekends and stuff, see what night shift had done while they weren't in. <laughs> Uh, next slide. Just more indication here showing different various where you've got the actual dry amps, you've got the time that it takes for the process, the temperatures of each thing, pressures, showing the different devices we incorporated in, bring into IA the ignition software, show it all on this one screen where before there was almost nothing to show all of this in one location. Next slide. This one was more of a mimic to an HMI that just showed lots of status on the machine for a single piece of machinery that was previously not tied into anything. So they could check in on it to make sure that everything was running, no faults, no e-stops, just lots of status and indication. Next slide. They weighed all their product here and kept track of rejects and everything. It's all for quality assurance here so they could track the weight of the product, make sure it wasn't dipping below a certain amount for quality. And as well as doing the production flow and mimic of everything on the production line, we also implemented um, H or mimic the HMI for all of their facilities and utilities um, stuff. Lots of uh, power monitoring, go to the next slide, and various other external devices that are used but not necessarily monitored from a production level. They see you give them the ability to actually see what their um, power stations are doing there in the plant there at the MCCs and everything. So you, they can watch this and make sure that nothing was getting out of hand or using any power than needed. Also, we implemented, um, well, they implemented the water meter into this, the next slide, trying to see how much water each facility was using and also trend that data to see what the flow was coming in and out. <coughs> there was also a lot of um, large, they had an engine room with lots of large engines in it. Next slide, you can see all, or I guess the tanks. You see all their tanks for water and different chemicals coming in and out of the facility and all tracked in differing units, basically the merge to mercury, CSI, everything all drawn onto one screen and visually represented for them. And the next screen. They also tied, we also tied into their weather station that they had at a central location because to the, their production facilities, it was very important to track the weather and adjustments that needed to be made based on temperature, humidity, and everything to keep the quality of the product very consistent. Next slide. I'll hand it back to Heath. And he'll explain the benefits that were gained. Thanks, Gary. Well, again, the results, time saved, money gained. The, uh, the process before we started was, for instance, the maintenance manager recording quality data and runtime data would have to get his pencil and clipboard, 
And if you know food processing, you have to go to the wash station, scrub up, remove your jewelry, put on your smock, your beard net, your hair net, put your booties on, go out on the floor, record data points, come back, take off all of your gear, go back up to your office, enter the data, and that was happening for him approximately four times a day on his shift. And that data was essentially stale or a snapshot of just four different times of the day rather than real live entire shift production data. And as the screen says, it saved him approximately 30 minutes, five hand washings and four smock changes along the way. Uh, another immediate return that our customers saw when we brought a production line up, there was uh, quality issues going on on a second shift production line. They were losing quality of product. They had shrinkage, and they couldn't determine what was going on. After a 24-hour trend of the production line, it was really obvious that second shift was speeding up the line and increasing the heat rather than running at the speed and heat that the first shift was. So an immediate quality fix was quickly determined after one day of production, which had been costing them quite a bit. The uh, improved production results, obviously a lot less time for people on the floor, production personnel, maintenance personnel, logging all of the data by hand. All of the plants are connected together in real time. Corporate office has access to everything. And we ended up, like I said, with up to nine plants all collecting data and sending it back. And it's been a very successful implementation for our end user. And they're continuing on without us now that the data is present to go ahead and pull even more data into their upper level ERP system since it's readily available and presented in a database format for them. And with that, Don, I'm going to pass it back to you. Hey, thanks so much. And Gary, thank you, too. That uh, uh, excellent presentation. We have, we have some questions. And I, I said at the outset, we'll go into a, a Q&A period. I do want to mention to uh, all of our attendees that you can go to the uh, question tab on your console and please type in any questions that you have. We're going to take a few minutes here to give uh, Heath and Gary a chance to answer some questions. So as you have them, type them in. I'll get to a, as many of them as I, uh, I possibly can. And um, I'll start with just a couple that I have here right now. And, and this one, I think, is going to go back uh, uh, to you, Gary. Um, you mentioned in a couple of your slides there that Ignition worked really well with vertical software. Um, can you just maybe go in, the question here is to go in a little deeper on, on why and how Ignition did that so well. Why was it able to do that so well for you? Ignition worked great in that application because all their data in the vertical software was in traditional Oracle style Oracle database. So we needed a software package that could interface with tables, intermediate and in that database where a lot of the other HMI packages do not have the ability to talk to a Microsoft SQL and then an Oracle as well. So this provided the opportunity that both we could talk to both, pass the data as needed, and do it all in the background without interfering with any of their front end of their software. Great. Thanks. Thanks so much, Gary. Um, I, I'm going to grab this one question, which just came in, because I can answer quickly from Paul. Um, and is, is there a license needed for web for each client? Um, no, that we, we license by the server, so you're going uh, you're gonna to get whatever number of clients you want. Um, to, to work with on that, Paul. So it's not, not a license needed for each client. Um, uh, this one actually was just kind of the power of, and a question in the direction of databases. Um, and I'll, he or Garrick, either one can comment on it. Why are databases and, and SQL so important in Ignition? Why is there so much value in, in, in Ignition in relation to those databases? Well, this is Gary. Um, I believe that you're going to get a lot of the value there because you can store data and you can then access it anywhere else, not just in Ignition. There are a lot of other front ends for databases that are available. 
So it gives you that kind of portability. But the ability to historize data and log into traditional databases is very helpful. It's helped, especially in this instance, so they could go and check then the temperatures and see that the production shift had raised the temperature of the oven the previous night with a timestamp of the temperatures of when it occurred, thus giving them the, the actual accountability of the occurrence and then the ability to correct it. So you can, it's more powerful to have the back end as a full functioning database versus a traditional HMI software flat file database that not necessarily is expandable and powerful. Great, thanks. I appreciate that. Just this is a little add-on question to that. Um, because you had to deal with this with your, your customer and your and your implementation. How much does someone need to know about databases and SQL to make changes in ignition? Um, you know, what, what kind of depth of knowledge is needed there? <laughs> um, that is the good thing about ignition in this sense as well. With, with the transaction groups, you're able to do a lot of the setup to read write from the database without having to even set foot in like a SQL query writing environment. So you you have the ability right there to not really have to know the ins and outs of the select and the inserts. But it also knowing that, learning that, you become more powerful. So it, 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 you can totally do it without knowing much about SQL, but it really helps, which is why the training and everything is a great thing to, <laughs> to have. I myself have attended it, so it's definitely something that I would recommend. Great. Yeah, we're we're um, we're strong promoters of training because once you're empowered to do this stuff with that training, it makes all the difference in the world and the speed and success of implementations. Um, this this question is actually I'll, I'm going to give the first part of the answer, but then I'm not sure what kind of databases we're being connected to there with your customer. Um, but the question here from Andrew simply says, "Will this product integrate with proprietary database?" Um, the answer to that is yes. It uh, yes it will. Um, let me you know I don't care if we're talking about Oracle, Microsoft, but what were the databases being connected to there? Do you have some, was more than one? Uh, can you give us a little insight on that? Yeah, I had connectivity to um, three of the main MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, and Oracle, all of varying degrees here at this, for this data collection um, implementation. So we tried, I mean, three of the big ones um, were all implemented and functioning on the same instance of ignition. Great, thanks. I appreciate you guys taking these questions. You guys can keep asking them because we're going to keep passing them over to Heath and Garrick as you as you send them over to me. This one goes uh, maybe to you, Garrick, but uh, either one. Uh, the multiple PLCs um, were all from the same manufacturer, Alan Bradley, Siemens. Comment on that. Wesley would like to know. Sure. I'll take that. Um, it was a large degree of Allen Bradley, but the various families. We had MicroLogix, Slix, Five, Control Logix, Compact Logix, just about every family imaginable. A lot of equipment in those types of facilities comes from OEMs, original ma machine manufacturers, and it's whatever they use at the time. We had Modbus, TCP, Modbus, RTUs. We had serial devices and sensors in the field with no PLC that we put on Ethernet enabled TCP IO. Um, we use some serial to Ethernet interfaces. Whatever it took to get information onto a backbone network, plant floor data collection network. Great. Garrick, maybe you you or can comment also uh, and talk a little bit more about how Ignition connects with PLCs. Uh, how easy it is to do, how difficult it is to do. You had a whole variety there. How did it work when you're trying to connect with a variety of PLCs? Uh, it, worked, it worked well. It, it, Ignition has the drivers built in to handle the Modbus, the straight TCP, the Allen Bradley. So right there they give you the setup to start collecting tag data from the gateway without needing third-party software in order to, to, to do that. So. Really simple, right from the gateway. You can connect PLCs, the Modbus devices, the straight TCP IP devices, and start reading tags. <laughs> Great, thanks. Uh, Stephen has a question here relating to continuous processing assembly line. He says, we do not have a continuous processing, i.e. assembly line. 
I would call it staging at each work center. Have you done installs with this type of production? So uh, Heath or Garrett, whichever one wants to take that question. Um, not sure how that, I would say no, except that the data collection really wouldn't be that much different. It depends on how you want to see it presented and which data you want to see presented. Um, we've implemented on a lot of different types of applications. This was a food plant. We've done baggage handling systems for airports. We've done animal livestock feed yard batching systems. Um, we've done well remote site RTU type data collection. We've used it in various degrees, so I would say it wouldn't be an issue to do that to log data from staging areas. Great, thanks. Um, so another question from Stephen says, when we say HMI, are we saying these interfaces capable of controlling machine functions, replacement of current HMIs running the machines? How, a little more understanding of the HMI and what it's capable of with this implementation. Sure. On this implementation, I kind of hit on that at the beginning. Rather than a traditional SCADA, supervisory control and data acquisition, this was pretty much pure data acquisition and visualization. Um, so this was all about what's going on on the plant floor. Let me see it, and let's get it into our other upper-level softwares, quality assurance softwares. Whereas other implementations we've done, it is full-blown data control, supervisory control. It can replace uh, any hard terminal type HMI panels, you have the full gra graphics and control capability, and with it being web-based, you can do it from home. You can do it from anywhere with an internet connection as long as you got security firewall to the automation system. So it is a fully enabled HMI and data collection system. Great, thanks. Here's a question. Um, building off of your web-based comment you just made there, but when you look to, uh, to make changes to the control system, how long does it take to update the system? How much downtime does that cause? What's the ease or difficulty when you're changing or adjusting? Well, it's very simple. <laughs> Being as it's web-based and server-based, you make a change in your designer, and literally with Ignition, when you save it, it can either be auto-pushed or updated as the client deems when the person, the operator updates it. So you can either auto-push or not interfere with production if they need the HMI to run. But there is no walking around to each terminal and doing an upgrade. <laughs> We're spending a lot of time walking around and <laughs> correcting it at each one. It's one, one download, basically. Yeah, I guess I would add that on this particular case study we were just talking about, um, there was a good portion of that development that was done on the fly from our office to the servers in the plants at the facility. So the implementation was very flexible. Great, thanks. Um, a, a build on question to that. You're dealing with, uh, and I'm really pleased to have you guys with the breadth of uh, integrator knowledge and projects you have on you. So this is sort of a broader question. Under what, uh, under what circumstances would you recommend web-based software? And when you're talking to your customers and working with talking about a project, you obviously presented Ignition to this project, why would you tell your customers to go with a web-based solution? What are the things that, that you say that say it's good, or in what cases do you not? You know, at this point, our, we're pretty much leading with Ignition because it's hard to come up with an instance where it doesn't apply. We've done it down to the level of where it's just a uh, operator hard terminal interface replacement, which you have licensing and pricing structured clear down to that level of just being a machine operator panel type software package. Um, up to the scale of integrating multiple plants. There's just not an instance where we've found that it isn't, doesn't make sense price-wise and efficiency-wise to use Ignition. Thanks. I'm going to just take this one from uh, 
Andrew, it says, is this product a replacement for Iconics or does it work with Iconics? I, mean, I, I know in different presentations I've been on with uh, uh, Steve Heck on our, our president, he's, he's basically said, hey, you want to work alongside? It'll work alongside. Um, you, you can work alongside Iconics. You, can, uh, you don't have to do some rip and replace. Uh, that being said, I, I have to confess a slight bias that will be in agreement with what was just said for the last question is that I think you're going to find that Ignition gives you the capability, the flexibility, the pricing and licensing model where um, it's a logical choice. We're hoping that we're making this a logical choice that's best for your customer, but you want it to work alongside something, it'll, it'll uh, work alongside it, Andrew. Um, so this is a, a sort of benefits. I want to just take a couple minutes and ask uh, take advantage of Heath and Garrick's time on automated data collection just as a general statement. That's our overall topic today. There seems to be still a, a fair number of companies that still prefer to track data by hand. You must run into some of these. This, this one customer, you just helped make that change. In your experience, why do you think these companies haven't made the move to set up an automated system? What are sort of the pluses and minuses that you run into from their viewpoint? On, on not making that move. Do well, you want to try that? Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, I guess that's the industry norm. A lot of these production facilities run almost 24-7 with no downtime, round-the-clock production shifts. There just isn't time to implement a project for doing a total plant floor data collection system. Um, so what they need is somebody that can come in without interrupting anything and do that seamlessly without, like you said, a software guru, and he's the only one who knows how to do it, and there's a lot of weird or hokey third-party interfaces to get this data collected. Um, so I'd say the norm is that this information is hand-collected today because getting the infrastructure set up and one package is simply easily going to get them that data hasn't been available readily in the past. Great, thanks. So when you think about that, um, if you could say, what, what do you think are the main benefits when you have a customer that does start collecting data automatically rather than manually? What are the, the things that they notice most quickly? Well, I, to us it seems fairly obvious to the customer. I don't think it was, but immediately they found process issues, quality issues, variances in operator A runs it this way, but operator B isn't nearly as efficient, his quality goes down. They were able to see from sensor information and production counts what was going on. So the amount of information is kind of overwhelming at first, but once they start analyzing what's going on with each line, it was it was much easier to see what the root causes were. Okay. I, I'm just curious about this. Was there anything in this project, um, as you talked about it, um, and went through the implementation with your customer, anything that stood out that surprised your customer the most as you were implementing the system? That was, you know, maybe they didn't expect it, it was a big plus, or anything that stood out that surprised them the most? Well, I guess the volume and availability of all the information. Like I said, their motto was collect it all and we'll decide what we want to use later and they're still implementing different parts of that information that's been presented to them for their IT department to grab and use in various ways. Probably the bang for the buck compared to another vendor software um, was probably the biggest issue or the biggest surprise to them. And that it was able Thanks. to perform. <laughs> Way more What's than that? that was. Great, thanks. Uh, a couple last questions, and we'll wrap up here. But um, I would say, uh, just it's, it says, are there? Um, uh, this is from Paul. Are there separate licenses for developers and uh, line folks? Just um, no. I don't think there. You're, you're, just so you know, um, and I, I would. I have a slide up here with. Uh, Jim Meisler, Vanessa Garcia, Myron Hurtling, Shane Miller on there, as well as Heath and Garrick if you want, uh, you know, more information or a deeper dive. But, um, it, you know, you're talking about having a license that allows the, the developers to work fine on it. I mean, you're not going to have 
I don't think you're going to have any difficulty being able to get that kind of flexibility you want from the overall license. We have different levels of license spent on how much you want to do. We're trying to scale for a size of projects and what your what your goal is with that customer. Um, it's, and you also, uh, Wesley asked, what is the recommended client license for each server ratio? I mean, you, you're licensed by the server, so you're going to use whatever number of clients you want to. We really haven't had any anything from our customers where there's been a problem in terms of number of clients. Uh, you guys at, uh, you know, Heath and Gary, you, you mentioned uh, on one slide, I don't have it up, but, you know, you had a fair number of clients you were using and 17,000 uh, data points, right? I mean, I, can you guess the number of clients again? Um, we really don't know how many people are logging into it, but uh, to our knowledge, it's unlimited. I think to the the questioner's point, there's no runtime license. There's one server license it is development and runtime all in one. There's no individual. So you buy it once for the server. As Don said, there's scaling. You can cut back on the unlimited use to get down to even more cost-effective uh, limit of needs. But um, yeah, we haven't run into any limitations, and it is just one license per server. Thanks. You know, if you're talking about, Paul, um, you know, uh, different PLCs, we have drivers for different PLCs, Alan Bradley, Mobus. It's not that we have all, but we have them available, and I think it's, uh, um, I just recommend you, you know, I, I'm not sure who you're working with from our uh, our, our sales team, our account executives, but uh, uh, get in contact with them, and you can get whatever details. Plus, our, our website's pretty comprehensive. It's in, in terms of our, just our, our viewpoint on it, we, we put a lot of information on pricing and what things cost right up front so you can be have full transparency and make your decisions on what you're getting into. I think you'll see that it, it's, it's pretty clear to be able to figure it out. Um, as, we, as we wrap up here, I want to just give a chance uh, to Heath and Garrick. As a final question, if you were uh, just giving your advice, there's a, there's a variety of people uh, attending today. There's end users who are looking inside their own organizations, and there's uh, other folks like yourself in the integration business who are working on developing projects for others. So um, I, I guess I'd start with you, Garrett, and you. then I'll go to you. Any final comments or advice to uh, any of the attendees today, Garrett? If you're looking for a package that can handle everything that you would need, basically everything from the plant floor up to the supervisor level, Ignition's a great choice, database back, limited clients, talk to any number of devices. I mean, there's literally no limits <laughs> as far as that goes. So it makes a great solution to do that. I really like using it. Thanks, Derek. Uh, Heath, how about any final thoughts for you? Um, easy use is pretty good. I would recommend the training, though. Um, we have found, since we work with a lot of different softwares, that uh, just jumping in and thinking this is just another major HMI software is is a misconception. Ignition provides a very large tool set. You can go about doing things a lot of different ways or trying to collect data a lot of different ways. There are definitely best practices, and those are taught in the training courses. Um, making modify our customers tried to make modifications to the existing application, and due to the complex nature of nine plants and all of that information, you really should have a good working knowledge of those best practices before you make any modifications. Hey, thanks. I, I want to say thanks to you and to Garrett both for taking time. I know you're extremely busy, but we appreciate you sharing this, this case study and some of your experiences. I, I'd like to say just in, in concluding to the audiences that uh, uh, do take advantage of the training. You can find our training schedule and availability on the website. Um, we're running training pretty continuously. We have the, we have the, uh, uh, the basic course training. We're having advanced training running, right, running our offices right now. Um, we've got coming up in another week or so uh, the OE downtime training um, for the, those uh, MES module training activities. So really, you know, talk to, and, and I would also recommend if you haven't seen it, we have 7.3 coming out, and it's going to be, with, I'm going to go bold on this webinar and say within a week, it certainly is plus or minus a couple days on that, you should call Jim Vanessa Myron Chain and get a, 
get a demo of 7.3 if you're going to want to see it. It's a very exciting release. I mean, I think some of the expansion and the ability of, of drawing tools and some of the improvements you're going to find are going to be very useful in the projects that you're working on. So um, with that, I, I, I do want to say thanks to everyone for attending. You know where you can reach us. You know where you can reach Heath or Garrick uh, from CASA Controls. And uh, you can call us for any kind of consultation or further questions. Thanks very much for your participation. And uh, have a great afternoon. We are concluded. <laughs>